friends, this is Angelina and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while but I'm back with another video. Today we are going to do a cohort analysis in SQL and then we are going to visualize the results in Tableau. At the end of this video, we are going to understand what a cohort analysis is, how to handle missing values in a data set, how to extract date parts from a date field in your data set how to create a cohort and assign the cohort index to each transaction, and how to create a cohort table for retention rate and visualize that in Tableau. And finally, how to interpret the cohort retention rate table. So at the end of this video, you should come up with a cohort retention table dashboard like this and understand how to interpret or what these values in here mean, okay? So at the end of this video, I hope that we can all achieve this together, okay? So with all that said, let's get started by getting our data set. The data set for today's demo will come from UCI's machine learning repo, okay? I'll share the link in the description below. Once you're on the website, take note of a few things. Uh, they show the number of attributes, in this case, the number of columns in the data set. There are eight. They also give you a brief information about the data set, the time periods in the data set and what the data is about. Some, something about a UK-based online retail store or something. And then the description of the attributes, okay? We have eight attributes and what each column here means, all right? So take a look at this, but the data itself, you want to click on data folder here. Once you click on data folder, it takes you to this page with two links. You want to click on the second link, which is the online retail. It's a spreadsheet. Once you click on that, it's going to download. For now, I already have this downloaded in my data set, okay? So all that you have to do is to click on that, make sure the file gets downloaded. Now that you have the file downloaded, let's import the data into our database. For this demo, we are going to use a SQL Server database, SQL Server Management Studio. So you want to create a connection to your database. I am using localhost. And the database I'm going to use for today's demo is PortfolioDB. If you toggle open the tables, you see that I don't have this file already imported. I'm going to use a tool called C uh, sorry, SQL Server Integration Services to import the data. So I'm going to go to Visual Studio 2019 and I'm going to create a new project. Now with this project, I'm going to create an integration services project. Because I already have been creating such projects, it's here on my recent templates. But if you don't see it, you just want to type in integration services or just integration. Now you see that integration services pop up here. So select that and go to next. Give it a name. And you see as I type in the name, the solution name also changes. It's okay to leave both of them the same. For this demo, you can choose to rename it. It's just a preference. I'm just going to leave them as is. So I'm going to hit create. So if you're wondering why I just didn't do the import like this, go to task and then, you know, use the import flat file or import data. I tried this and it kept failing. So I just decided to use a tool that I'm familiar with and just quickly import it. Okay. That's why I'm using the Visual Studio tool here. So go back here and as it, uh, it opens the, the package, you see under SSIS packages under that folder, there is a package here. If you don't see that, just right click on here, create a new SSIS package. And now we have another one called package one, but we don't need that. So I'm going to right click on that and I'll hit delete. Okay. Now that I have this, all that I'm going to use is a data flow task. You can drag and drop it onto the canvas like that, or you can double click on it to just, you know, let it pop up here like that. Double click and there it is. I'm just gonna remove that. I just wanna rename this quickly to online retail probably data import. How about that? Okay. So now that I have renamed this, I'm just going to configure it quickly. Go to other sources, go to flat file. Now, the main reason why I saved a copy of the data as a CSV was to use the flat file source. Anytime I use the Excel, there was too much work that you needed to do to make it work. All right. And I didn't want all of you to go through that. So just uh, open the file, save a copy as a CSV, and it's easier to work with that, okay? So I'm just going to copy this path here. And I'm going to configure the flat file, new connection. 
and I will put my path here like that with a backslash and I'll still click on the browse because I need to pick the file. Now you don't see the file because of this uh, section here. I need to change it to CSV. Select the file that I need, open, and then just put your uh, double quotation mark here for the test qualifier, you know, and I'll call this flat file manager or connection manager, whatever you want to call it, it's fine. So over here, rem remember, column names are in the first row. So you want to uh, leave this checked, okay? So go to next. The data looks good. Go to advanced. Okay, so now everything here says it's a string and it's 50, even for the quantity. How about the price, customer ID? All right, so what we want to do is that we want to, um, even the date is a string. So click on suggest types and just hit okay. All right, it says now a customer number is an integer, uh, date is also a date. Now the quantity is now an integer and even the invoice has reduced in terms of the string, the length of the string to seven. All right, I think this is good. So I hit okay here. And now the main reason why I'm using the SSIS tool is to leverage the error output section here. I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to toggle this down here and I'll say ignore failure and I'll apply, okay? Hit okay here. This is all that you need to do. That is the main reason why we are using SSIS for this input. Now, because we are ingesting this into a SQL Server database, I'm going to use the OLEDB destination. I'm going to configure it as uh, new. Okay, I already have a connection manager created. However, if you don't have that, all you have to do is to click on new. And then under the new, you can either type in the dot, which is your local host, and then it will give you access to all the databases you have. And you select one of them and you have to test the connection. If it's successful, you hit OK and then you hit OK. Or you can just type here local host. Okay, it will give you the same results as the dot. Select the database you want to use. It could be something different. Okay, select that. Again, test the connection. Hit OK and hit OK. However, I already have this created, so I'm going to cancel it. I'm just going to select one of my existing database connectivities. So I'm going to go with the portfolio DB and I'll hit OK. Now I'm going to change the data access mode to fast load. We need this ASAP. Okay. Now I'm going to create a new table. Select an existing table or create a new table on the fly. Because I don't have any uh, table called online retail, I'm going to create one and I'm going to rename the table from here like that, online retail. Okay, it looks good, I'll hit okay. So once we run this, we would realize that a new table will be created here from the tool. So I'll hit mappings and go to output and everything is okay, it looks good. So I'll hit save and then all that I have to do next is to execute the task. This should load pretty quickly, look at that. Fast, fast, fast. Perfect. Okay, so now we stop this job. And then because it didn't fill, I presume there is a file, sorry, a table already created here. So let me refresh my tables. All right, so now that we see our data, uh, sorry, our table here, online retail, we can, we can inspect the data by right clicking on that and selecting the top 1000 rows. And over here, um, we are going to inspect the data and decide what type of cleaning we are going to do on the data set. So I think at this stage, I'll just give it a set better cleaning data. And then uh, let me remove the top 1000 here because we want to see the total number of records that we are working with. I mean, we saw that from the SSIS too, but um, I just want to do this here. Total records is 541909. Okay. Now, as we inspect the data, we have eight columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, from here, we just want to make sure that all the records have a customer ID. If not, we would remove those. So see here, we have some customers without an ID. Remember, this is a numeric field. Let's see here. The columns, customer ID is a numeric field. Hence, if there is no value, it evaluates it to zero, okay? So all the ones where the, the customer ID is zero means the, the, the record do not have a customer ID associated with it. 
So we are going to remove those from our data set. We can also see that at the quantity and the unit price level, we have some quantities that are negative. And from the description I'm seeing, that means it was a return, like a negative quantity. Maybe somebody bought an item with 160 quantity and returned it back to the company. All right, that's what I'm assuming. That's how come probably there is no unit price. So maybe after we remove the customer ID as part of the cleaning of the data, we would also remove all the records where the quantity and the unit price are not greater than zero. Okay, so let's, start, let's get started. So first of all, I would just say where customer ID, you know what, let's see how many of those uh, records have customer equal to zero. 135, okay, so 135080 records have no customer ID and we do not want those in our data set. So now I'm going to say where it's not equal to and that should give me about, about what? 406829 records have customer ID. So those are the ones we are going to focus on for now. And now that we have this, I'll, I'll put this record set into a common table expression. Okay, I'll put that in a CTE because we are going to keep working on that CTE to get a refined data and then um, put that data in a temp table. So I'll start with a with clause like a regular CTE with, and I will just call it the same name as the table name for now. And I'll say as, I'll open parentheses and I'll close parentheses. Yeah, let me just select all my query and hit the tab once. So now this CT can be called like this. Select star from, let's run that. Great, so it's working okay. Now what we want to do, like we, uh, like I stated earlier on, I want to remove all the records where the quantity is not greater than zero. So I say where quantity is greater than zero and uh, unit price is also greater than zero. These are the records that I want to continue to work with. So if I run this, by just writing this query, we have reduced the data from 406829 to 397882. Okay, so these are the records with uh, quantity and unit price. So now I'm going to pass this result set to another CT. And um, because I already started a with clause, I'm just going to do just a comma here and pass another name. I don't know what to call it. I'm just going to call it quantity, unit price. <laughs> that sounds, I don't know how it sounds, but hey, that's what I'm going to call it, as. So I'm going to pass this query down here to the CT that I just created. Okay, so now I can call this here. And I'll call that as... So now this CTE that I have created is based on the very first CTE I created, okay? So if I call this quantity, okay, I should get my, how many, 3.97882, perfect. The next thing that I want to do is that I want to do a duplicate check, okay? I want to do duplicate check next. So I put this here, duplicate check. Now to do the duplicate check, I'm just going to use a function, uh, the row number, uh, and I'll do over, and I'm going to partition the data by some specific data points. Uh, let me do the invoice partition by, I'd say invoice number, and I will do the stock code. The description, I think the stock code equates, uh, the stock code gives the description. I can just use this and skip this one. So I'm going to do quantity. Uh, probably I could add the unit price, maybe quantity and just do order by. 
order by uh, invoice, invoice date. And I'll call this dupe flag because this is what is going to help me remove the duplicate. All right, so let's see what we have done here. Oops, I think I saw. Okay. So what this query is doing is that it's uh, taking the data set, the results that we have here, and it's selected some specific data points, the invoice number, the stock code, and then the quantity. Okay, and it's saying that if I group the data pair, these three data points, do I have a duplicate? So now, obviously, row number 306 and 307, we see that it's identical row, and hence, the second one is a dupe. Let's see another one. Wow. This one here. Yep, I think my duplicate check is working. So I have three records and I think they are the same. So I'll just focus on, you know, the records where the flag says it's equal to one. Anything above one is a duplicate. So I'm going to pass this, okay, to another CTE and I'll call it dupe check. You can call it whatever you want, but uh, this is the <laughs> name I can think of at this moment. Now I'm going to select the data from here. Select from here. I'm going to do select star where this dupe flag, okay. First of all, let me run it all. Remember, we are we are working with the CTE. I have CTE1, CTE2, and now CTE3. And I'm selecting from CTE3. As long as you are calling the CTE in one of those, um, you know queries you've written is going to be okay because with the CTE, you have to make sure that you, you pass the name of the CTE in your next select statement, okay? So now I'm going to say select all of this where the dupe flag, this flag is equal to one because those are the unique records, okay? Now my data set is now down to uh, 392667, okay? So this is what I'll consider my clean data for the cohort analysis. You know what, let me see where the records, sorry, where the dupe flag is greater than one. Hmm. I have about um, 5215 duplicate records where the data points I used in checking the duplicates, okay? So right now with this result set, Sorry, let me take it back to equal to sign. This is what I want. I'm going to hold this result set into a temp table because now I don't want to keep calling uh, the CTEs like that because with the CT, you just can't run the select statement. It's going to fail, okay? So I have to, you know, run everything together in one um, select before I can, you know, see my results. So I'm going to pass this into a temp table and I'm going to call the temp table um, online retail, probably main. Remember, this is just a local temp table. If I want it to be global temp table, I'll just pass double, um, uh, what is it called? Hash sign, okay? So I'm going to pass the data or the clean data set into a temp table. I'm going to call that online retail main, okay? So let's run this. All right, so this clean data can be seen here. You see, 392667 rows are affected. So now I can just select from this temp table without running all the query on the top. All right, so let's see. Perfect. So now we have a simple clean data set to be working with. Clean data in cohort analysis. Now, to create a cohort analysis, the following data points or labels are required, right? You need uh, the unique identifier, unique identifier for the group that you're about to make the analysis on, right? For example, sorry, unique identifier. So in this case, our unique identifier is the customer ID, okay? These are required data points for cohort analysis. You also need the initial start date, initial start date, 
In this case, since we are doing a, um, a retention cohort analysis, we are going to use um, the first uh, invoice date. Okay. Wow, what am I typing? First invoice date. <laughs> first invoice date as the initial start date. Let me remove this. Okay. Now, this is um, going to help us come up with a cohort group. Like this is the, the, the first the first month or the first day that the, the customer initiated a transaction on your site. Okay. Then we also have to see uh, you know the revenue data. Typically, that's what you need for a cohort analysis. So any data that is linked to the purchase, like any data linked to the purchase, whether it's the quantity, the price, or the amount, whatever. But in this case, I think I'm going to focus on the uh, on the on the initial start date because we are trying to see uh, the retention rate. But yeah, typically they, these are the data points required for a cohort analysis. So with that said, we will start by creating our you know some labels. So I want to see for this data set that we have, when was the first time that a certain or a specific customer made a purchase? So now I'm going to create a cohort group for that. So I'm going to select. Sorry, I already have this select statement here, but let me just retype it, okay? From this table. And I'm going to see for a given customer, for a given customer, when did they make their first purchase? So in this case, the invoice date would be the purchase date because, um, I mean, that is when, you know, a transaction was started. So I'd say first purchase date or first invoice date. Okay, and then um, because I want to group the cohort, I'm going to do this uh, analysis per month. So I don't care about the, the day the purchase was made. I only care about the month, the year and month. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, create a derived column, like a, a date function here in SQL to create a derived column. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the year of the first purchase, the month, of the first pages, and then I'm going to pass one as uh, the day of the purchase. So in this case, the main date, I need the year, and then the main date, I need the month. And I'm going to call this the cohort date. Okay. And let me run. Well, because I did the aggregate function here, I need to put the customer ID into a group by. So I do group by that, and let's see what we get. Perfect. So this customer made the first purchase in December 2010. Okay, and this is just the derived column I created. The only thing that is different is the day. Instead of 20th, I said it's first because I'm just going to uh, group the data per month and year. Okay. All right. So it's looking good. I just want to put this whole result set into another 10 table and I'll call it, I mean, the name doesn't matter. I'll call it cohort. So I'll create this. Perfect. So right now I have two temp tables. I have uh, my cohort uh, temp table. And I also have the online retail. So let me see how that looks quickly. I'll do star and execute. Okay. So again, uh, why would you want to do a cohort analysis, right? The main reason why you probably want to do a cohort analysis is to understand the behavior of the customers that um, you know do business with you. You want to see the patterns and the trends of uh, you know uh, of a group. Now, when we say a cohort, a cohort is basically a group of people with you know common characteristics. If a cohort is a group of people with a common characteristics or something in common, then what is a cohort analysis? Okay, a cohort analysis is simply an analysis on several different cohorts. So, in this case, a group of customers that I have here, I just want to better understand their behaviors, their patterns, and then their trends. So in this case, the type of cohort analysis that I'm trying to do on this, um, you know, demo is um, a retention-based analysis. Okay, because depending on the type of cohort you have, your analysis could be different. Because with a cohort, you can have a, a time-based cohort, a size-based cohort, and then a segment-based cohort. Whatever we are doing right now is a time-based cohort. I'm just looking at the first, uh, the time that. Um, 
a certain group of people, you know, purchased or did something on my uh, on my on my site or on my product and see their behavior after that first instance of activity. Okay, so I'm using the time, but you can also do a size-based cohort. You group your customers or your you know yeah your customers into a bucket where you're looking at these customers with a higher purchase or these customers with a smaller purchase you see their trends so that you can understand their lifetime value what we call the ltv okay so in that case you want to be doing some cumulative you know analysis on them right now we are trying to do retention analysis so with cohort you can do a retention analysis cumulative analysis you can even do uh, i think uh, uh, survivorship analysis and all that okay so whatever we are about to do is just retention analysis now that we have our uh, our, our cohort group okay the 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 date here is giving us the cohort um, month right the next thing we want to do is to create uh, the cohort index now what is this cohort index basically it's an integer representation of the customer stage in the lifetime of the, of the of the process basically a number that represents the number of months that has passed since the customer's first purchase okay the integer represents the number of months that has passed since the customer's first purchase that is what we are about to create as the index okay so to do that i'm going to join two tables i'm going to join my online table i'm going to join the the, the cohort table because I need the invoice date from this table and I need the cohort date from this table to to come up with a cohort index okay so what I'll do is that I'll just copy this line here I'll just select from here and I'll call this main and I'll do a left join to this table here it's also a temp table and I'll call it C and I'll say join on m dot customer ID sorry M dot customer ID is equal to C dot customer ID. So what I can do simply is I'll do M dot star. I want everything from the M table, but from the C table, do I want everything? C dot. I just need the cohort date, and then everything else I'm about to derive it. So what I want from here is that I need the um, um, the year and the month from two different dates. So this is what I'm this is what I mean. M dot year from oops m dot year from the invoice date. Okay. And I'll call it invoice year. Hmm. Invoice year. And then I need sorry, what have I done here? <laughs> Interesting. M dot Okay, now over here I need month into bracket m dot uh, invoice date, and I'll call this invoice month. And then now I need to use my C table here. I call it C dot. I think it's cohort date. Sorry, I need a year. Yeah. And this is cohort, yeah, and this is going to be month, C dot cohort month, cohort date, and that would be just this. And month. Okay, let me run this and see. All right. So, I see that the query is done running and we are still returning our original records 392667. Okay, all that we have done is that we have just joined the data and we have calculated a few things we have derived. Like I said, we, we, we use the date part function and uh, we took the year and the month from some specific date. So from here, we took the year, we took the month. Now we're taking the year from the cohort and the month from the cohort. The next thing that I want to do is that I need the um, the year difference and the month difference to get me to the formula where I can uh, you know create a cohort index. So what I will do is that I will select all of this and I'll create a subquery. I could have done this simply in this uh, 
you know, in a curry here, but I just want it to be much cleaner. That's why I'm doing this up right here, but um, you can do whatever you want, whichever way is easier for you. So right now I'm going to select this, I'll call it MM. You can call it anything <laughs> at this point, mm.star, sorry, dot star. And then I'm going to do, um, um, uh, a year diff, year difference, okay, year difference. And that is going to be equal to the invoice year minus the cohort year, okay. And then I'm also going to do a month difference, month diff, okay. And that's also going to be the invoice month, okay, the invoice month minus the cohort month. Copy this part, okay. All right, let's see how the data looks now. All right, so all that we have done now is that we are taking the the year from here and we are subtracting this year from that. Again, we are taking this month and we are subtracting it from that. Okay, it is getting us closer to the, the you know the all the data points or variables that we need to calculate our cohort index. Okay, so I think the final piece is uh, here in terms of getting the cohort index. I'm gonna hit Control R, R just to remove the you know the message. Sorry, just to remove this uh, message pane here at the bottom, Control R. So now I'm going to go back to another subquery. Okay, they all come together neatly. So I'm going to say that for this query here, don't miss your. Sorry, did I do wrong? Don't miss any parentheses, or else it's going to, you know, not work out. So here, call it triple M, M M M. So select everything from MMM dot star. That is everything. And now this is the formula to create your cohort index. Cohort index. I meant to type cohort index. What you do is you take your year difference. Okay. We have 12 months in the year. So you take your year difference. Then you multiply it by 12. Then you add your month difference when you add one, okay, plus one. Now this formula should give you your cohort index, okay. Like I said, the cohort index is basically an integer representation that uh, helps you to determine the number of months that has passed since the customer first made a purchase or first did an activity or transaction from your site or from your you know business, okay. So now this is going to assign some index to each individual transaction in the data set. So let's run this and see. Okay, so whatever we are seeing here is saying that for this customer, okay, they appear to have made the index one, okay, the index one here means that this customer made their second purchase or their next purchase in the same month they made their first purchase. We can prove it in a bit. Let's copy this. Uh, let me go back to the main data source. From, what do we call it? This table. Uh, customer ID is equal to select star. And probably I have to order by order by invoice date, okay? Invoice date. And let's take this top of that. And let's just focus on only that here. Where customer ID is equal to this. Like I said, the one here means that this customer made their next purchase in the same month they made their first purchase, okay? According to the data set, they made their first purchase in December 2010, and then they made their second purchase again in December 2010. All right. So um, since I did the order by invoice, let's see. Their first purchase, since I did the order by invoice date, descending order, the minimum purchase is definitely this one, December 2010 on the 7th. If I keep scrolling down, 7th, you see, 
they made another purchase on December 13th, okay? And again, on December 20th, okay? So this customer made multiple purchases in the same month. That is what this index here is telling us. And again, they also made a purchase in the next month after their you know, first purchase. And we can see that clearly from here, January 2011, okay? So this is what the index has done. It has given us the how many months that passed before the customer's first purchase. For this uh, customer, nothing passed. They made the same, uh, their next purchase in the same month they made their first purchase, all right? So I'm going to comment this out because I want all the records because I'm going to put, again, <laughs> all the results set into a temp table. I'm going to call it cohort retention. Okay, so I'm going to execute. Oops, I didn't mean to do all that. Control R. All that I want to run is this part of the query. Okay, so now let's see how it looks. I think we are at a point where we can extract this data and make it ready for Tableau. Okay, execute this. Because the next steps I'm going to perform here is just to show you how to do the uh, cohort retention table in SQL. But I also want to demonstrate that in Tableau. So, so with the Tableau piece, this is the final uh, point where you want to extract the data. So you want to right click on here and you say uh, save results as. Now I'm going to save this results as um, CSV and I'll call it cohort retention. Okay. CSV. And I'm saving it in my folder here. So I hit save. And I should get, yep, this is it, cohort retention. So I have it here right now. All right, now that we have the file saved, we are ready for the Tableau piece because we're going to use Tableau public. But for now, let's continue. What we need to do next is to take this data set and find the unique or the distinct customers, okay, distinct customer ID their cohort date or cohort month, okay, cohort month or cohort date, and then their cohort index because we're about to pivot this data, cohort index, okay, if I run this, okay, so for uh, giving this customer, let me order by customer ID, not necessarily required, but let's do this, order by one here quickly, so giving this customer, they made a purchase, in the first month, they made their first purchase. And then after that, they came back after nine months, I believe, after eight months had passed or whatever. Maybe not. If I did the order buy, I would see that they came back in the second month, uh, in the fifth month and all that. All right. Maybe if I did the order buy this, I would know. I would, I would be better. I would be able to explain it better. All right. So maybe this and three. Okay, so all that we see here, so giving this customer here, okay, they made a purchase in the first month in which they made their very first purchase. They made it another purchase in the second month after their first purchase, and they skipped the third and the fourth, and they came back on the fifth month, okay? So they are kind of a returning customer, all right? Now, there are some of the customers, they made their first purchase and never showed up. Hmm. Yep. All right. So now let's pivot this and let's see how many customers returned in a given cohort month. All right. So what I'll do is I'll remove the order by not required. So I'll say select. We are about to do a pivot. So I'll just give the header pivot data to see here. To see the cohort table. All right, so I'd say select from this, I think, and that would be my uh, T or whatever table, I'd say TBL, okay, select star. I'm trying to create a pivot, so select star from TB, and I'll say pivot. If you are familiar with SQL pivot, you know, you have to pass in an aggregate function here. So in here, I'm going to do a count of my customer ID. I'll say customer ID for the index. Okay. Oh, no, it's customer ID. 
right? For cohort index. In first of all, control R, just in case you don't know how many records are in the cohort index, how many distinct values make up the cohort index. Let's find out quickly. We have 13. Okay, so I already have a I already wrote it down because I know this <laughs> it is already. We have 13 distinct cohort uh, index. So I'm going to pass that you need those unique IDs for your uh, pivot. All right. So I'm going to say in this. All right. Control. Sorry. Control R. Bring this back here just to organize the group simply. I'm saying. Uh, let me give this a name as pivot table. Mm, yep. And uh, I think I'm done with my my uh, pivot table. I'm selecting from this table into uh, this. Run, run this part. Okay. As I run that, I'm seeing that pivots this data for this indexes here. All right, let's run this and see. Oops. I want to have my results in a grid, not as a as a text. See at the top here, that's why my data is showing like this. I have to click on this here. Run this again. Okay. So given a a, a, a cohort, then well, let me order by order by cohort date or order by one. Okay, so control R, this is the whole query for the pivot. Select all of this and execute. Okay, so given the cohort month of December 2010, we'll say the base, meaning uh, the total number of customers that showed up in that month were 885. Now, out of the 885, 324 returned in the next month. Okay, and so on. All right. Over here too, we have uh, December, sorry, um, let's say July 2011, 188 customers did a transaction. And out of those 188, 34 did transaction the next month again, and so on, okay? So this is what this table here means. Within the 13 months, okay, here, this 13 months that we have, that is the cohort index that I have here. Within the 13 months, we have customers that made a purchase for a given cohort. So the number of uh, customers that made a, their first purchase in December 2010 were 885, okay? Now out of the 885, we had a repeat customer of 324 for the next month. That is what this means, okay? Now, I think I want to um, convert this to ratios or to rates. So I want to, you know, convert this to uh, percentages, just to know that, okay, if this represents 100%, what is the percentage of customers that showed up the next month? Let's say 50%, 24%, that makes it easier to, you know, you know, read. So what I want to do is that I want to pass, I'm going to use the same results for that ratio. So I'm going to pass this pivot into, <laughs> I've done a lot of temp tables today, into a temp table called cohort pivot. Okay, so if I run this, there shouldn't be any, no, I don't have to run that with the order by clause, but I can select this part here and execute. All right, I have 13 rows. So now I can just select this. Instead of right, running the whole pivot table again, I'll just say select from here. And now order by is the same data, just making it easier on me. Perfect. Okay, so now I have a query already prepared for this, for the ratios. All that I'm going to do is that I'm going to take, given a particular, you know, uh, cohort index, okay, the cohort period or index one, and I'm going to divide by the base. So for all the cohort months, the first period is considered the base because we consider those um, periods as the first time uh, a transaction was initiated for that particular cohort month. Okay, so for this, let's say April 2011, 
one is the base because we are saying that 300 people showed up for this month and out of the 300 people that showed up 64 returned right 61 returned 63 came back again okay so one is going to be the base for all of these all right so i'm going to say divide this if you divide this you should get one i mean 100 percent okay it's over here, but because I want to get it in a ratio form, I'm just going to do um, 1 times 1 1.0 times that. Let me see what I get. Okay, perfect. And then I'm going to multiply this results by 100. 1 is a whole number here, but it's uh, 1 here is representing 100%, but I want to convert that to percentages. So this is 100% and this is exactly what I want, okay? So I'm going to do, repeat this, okay, for, uh, what was it called? Just change this to two, okay? But the base will always be one, like I said, the base, so I'll take the second one and I'll use the base as one to know how many uh, records, uh, how many customers came back in terms of percentages. So basically 36.6% 36 came back uh, the next month to make a purchase after the first month. Okay, so since this is the base, that's how come all of them 100%. It's like 885 divided by 885, right? 41 divided by 41. So this represents 100%. That is the base. All right, I already have a query for that. So um, I'm only going to copy that part. I don't need to type all of these out like that. So I'm going to just um, replace everything here. Control R. And then I'm going to remove the star and I'll put cohort date and that's basically it. And that's basically it. So at first I had it as a, let me run these two together. Select star, run these two together and I'll show you. I had this as a, just a table. With, uh, records here, no ratios, and now I have this in percentages. So basically, it's the same thing uh, presented in different ways. So now, this is how you can, you know, so I hope you understand how to interpret this. This is representing the base. So this is the number of records that showed up for a given cohort month, and how many of these numbers that showed up for a given cohort month came back the next month and the month after the next and on all that okay and this is uh you know the ratios you see a lot of zeros here there was no customer returning on this month index here so there we go now this is the end of the sql part the next thing we are going to do is that we're going to go to tableau public and then we're going to visualize this in tableau okay as we see this is a lot of numbers here it's it will be easier if you visualize it with tableau all right so the next thing we'll do is that we would minimize this and we'll go to Tableau Public. Remember, we already extracted the data we are going to use in Tableau to a CSV. So I'm going to minimize this. And if you do not have Tableau Public, just go to, I'll share the link in the description below. Just go to this link and, you know, download the app. It would ask you for your uh, email, okay? Now, once you pass in your email, it should give you the opportunity to download Tableau Public. It's free. But just that it has limited data sources to to use you can also use tableau desktop okay but that would not give you access to you know publish it and share it with other people it would only remain on your desktop if you don't have it licensed okay so we are going to use tableau public i already have this installed and all that so if you don't have it downloaded install it and then follow along so if you are using windows type in your search tableau public uh, as i click on it it's loading on my other screen, but I'll, I'll bring it to my, this is it. This is how it opens. It just shows some of your recent dashboards that you've worked on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the text and I'm going to go to my folder. This is the file that I just saved, okay, cohort retention. And I'm going to go to open. Let me minimize, make this bigger. So now that I have my cohort retention open, let me just preview the data quickly. All right, so it says we have 392,666 records, and then we have 17 fields, okay? All the fields that we have created, it can be seen here. Yeah, 
up to our cohort index column. All right, now let's go to the sheet. That's where we're going to build our worksheet, you know. The first thing that we will do is that we are going to um, create a calculated column. And the calculated column, just like I did in SQL, you know, I did, um, what was it, uh, a distinct, distinct um, customer count, right? That is exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to do calculated field, and it pops up on my other screen, and I'll call it number of records. And this number of records is just going to be a count distinct, count D of my customer IDs. And basically that's it. And now I'm going to convert my cohort index to uh, a dimension. And then for the cohort date, let me just create a copy. Mm. Uh, duplicate, that's what they call it. And then I wanna make this, sorry, make this, uh, change the data type to string. Okay, and I'll call this, and I rename this, rename to cohort, cohort period, how about that? Okay, so I'm going to use the cohort period here in my rows, and then I'm going to drag my cohort index, where did I put that cohort index here to the columns? Nice, so just like we saw in SQL, the only thing left is that I have to drag my number of records to the text. Look at that. Look at that. It's looking good already. So what I'll do next is that I'm going to duplicate uh, sheet one so that I can use sheet one for my retention rates table and I'll keep sheet two as uh, just the cohort table just like it is right now. So I'm going to say uh, duplicate and then I'll just focus on sheet one. What I'll do next from here is that I'm going to drag and drop um, let me convert this to percentages now, uh, percent of total. And then I'm going to drag and drop um, that onto color. And I'll change the color to, I'll change the, the, the automatic to square. And now I have to drag and drop the um, number of records back here. But this time around, I'm going to convert it again back to percent total, okay? This is looking good already. All I have to do next is I have to change the color. Just like I demonstrated, I think it was a red, green or something. I don't remember, but um, red, uh, red, gold, apply, let me see. Yeah, this is it. This is what I had used. So I'm going to change this to entire view. I'll probably hide, you know, I'll keep it and call this uh, cohort retention rate. I'll hit apply and I'll hit okay. And I just copied this for my sheet name as well. I think if I had uh, changed the sheet name, I would probably get it as a sheet header as well. All right, so this is looking good. Let me probably enlarge this piece here so that I can see the cohort period. I don't know if I should change anything here. Let me probably do a formatting and center my uh, font. Look at that, it's looking good. Don't want to make anything bold. Um, let's see. Let me keep it like that. Let me keep this. All right, let's go to the next one. So over here, this is just going to be the numbers. I don't have to do much here. I'm just going to, I'm just going to convert this to percentages because I want sheet one to look like this more red. If I don't convert it to percentages, it won't look more red because the number here varies, right? So what I'm doing now is that I'm going to convert this to percent total. I'm going to drag that to color again. And now I'm going to go back to, sorry, oops, oops, oops. What did I do? I'm going to close this. Now drag and drop numeric, sorry, number of records back into text. Uh oh, what happened? Change this to square again. And now I can change the color from here. Red gold is what I had used. Apply is looking good. And again, I'll do entire view. And what did I call this? Let me just call this um, 
cohort table. All right, so here too, I just probably would want to center the, uh, the, the numbers format, go to text, and I'm going to go to center. Maybe I'll have to do the bold again, like I did the other one. Yeah. Yep. I think I don't want to hide this. I'll keep this as is, and I have two different tables. Now I can build a dashboard with this. Because now this is a worksheet. If I want to present the two chats at the same time, I want to click on dashboard and change the size to automatic. And now I have to drag and drop these on here, probably side by side. This is good. Let me minimize this a little bit. Really, what's going on here? I'm not sure why I do not see, uh, you know, let me change this to two decimal, one decimal place or probably no decimal places at all. Uh, is this how to do that? Change this to percent, no decimal place. All right, let me see how my dashboard looks. All right, this looks good. Well, I could have given some color to the header or something, but you know what, this is not for, you know, the beauty of it, I just want to show the rates, and I already explained what the rates here means, uh, the number of people or the percentage of customers that returned to do business is what you see here. So you have the actual number and you have the, the percentages as well. So assuming, let me just rename this to cohort retention dash. And as always, now that you have this beautiful chat here, if you want to, um, uh, show this or present this to somebody else. You can publish it to Tableau Public or you can change the color, do whatever you want to do with it. Probably instead of using the red and gold for two different things, maybe I could have used that. Yeah, this is also not bad. I don't know what you think, but yeah, we could do this too. Perfect. I'll, I'll keep this. Now let's see how the chat looks. Yeah, two different colors. And if you wanted to publish it to Tableau Public, you simply go to File and you say save to Tableau Public as, and if you have already signed in, maybe I haven't. Let me just log in quickly. And then I hope it hides the password as I type. It does. All right, so I'll sign in. Ooh, out, out, look. <clears throat> How about that? So it's going to ask me to give it a, uh, a title. I just want to call it cohort retention dash. Cohort retention dash. And I'll hit save. All right, so it's publishing. I think once it's done, it will open your, your browser. Sorry, it popped up my browser on another screen. So. This is it. This is the link. It's published. Yes. And this is exactly what we had done in Tableau. You can give this headers some background. They can look prettier and nicer than I have. But yeah, this is uh, our cohort retention dashboard. I hope this session was useful or helpful to you. Uh, if so, please do like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. And I hope to catch you on my next video. Thank you for watching.